We've known for some time that the US and the UK approach comedy differently. So why is it that the US relentlessly copy our shows? And why do we surreptitiously steal from them? I'm Michael Spicer and I have all the answers. Hello. I guess the biggest difference is that we don't mind layering on endless misery for our characters. We can do bleak like no one else, but the US don't really want bleak when they want to laugh. That, that those two things just don't complement one another. So why is it that despite this, TV companies from the US and the UK come together on a regular basis to see if they can copy each other's successes? So we hear you've been having a lot of success with your TV show Wheels. Yes, it's been a big hit for us. Well, I'm here today to say that we'd very much like to make our own US version. Right, yes. I, I mean, the, the problem of homelessness really is a universal one, isn't it? Of, of what? Of, of homelessness. Well, that doesn't sound very funny. Well, it's a, it's a dark comedy. But I was under the impression that this was about a guy who loves cars. No, it's about a guy who's forced to live and sleep in his car. Right, and he, and he drives around from town to town getting into all sorts of adventures. No, the car doesn't have wheels. Th that, that's why it's called wheels. It's ironic. Uh, yeah, we, we don't do irony either. Um, you see, we've had a lot of pressure from the CEO to turn the Fast and Furious franchise into a, a TV show. Fast and Furious? Right, so when we heard that there was a show out there called Wheels, we, we just had to come and see you. So the only thing you know about the show is that it's called Wheels? Well, sometimes that's all you need to know. Well, well no, you, you sort of need to know other things, like what it is. Listen, it's a show about a guy in a car that's good enough for me. A car that can't be driven. Well, we might need to fine-tune that aspect. With a guy facing homelessness. Yeah, we'll probably swap out the homeless guy for a guy who... It does have a home and who drives around from town to town getting into all sorts of adventures. And he has a dog called Jimbo. You're not going to remake the show at all, are you? You're just going to use it to crowbar in your own ideas. We'll pay you $50 million. W would you like the car or...? For some reason that's never been fully explained to me, the US will never just buy and broadcast the original UK version of the show that they're interested in. It has to be remade for US audiences, no matter how illogical that sounds. And yet over here, we don't do that. We didn't need a remake of Cheers called Cheers Mate, did we? Set in a shepherd meme pub in Watford. We didn't need a remake of The Cosby Show called Fun Family Doctor Who Should Be in Jail, did we? I mean, that would have been a very strange title for a sitcom. If you think about it, how many British remakes have actually been a success in the US? Like half a dozen in 60 years? Notable flops include Faulty Towers. This is always at the top of the list of most ill-conceived US remakes. Why is that? Because they tried three times and every single time it was a disaster. Bizarrely, the US tried to do their own version of the Inbetweeners and in order to pacify the advertisers, they did it without crude bits and without swearing. The in-betweeners. That's like trying to boil an egg without an egg. The US have attempted to do their own version of Peep Show, the hit UK sitcom, five times. And The Young Ones, which was renamed in the US, Oh No, Not Them. I'm very pleased to say that there is virtually no information about this pilot online, which quite frankly is a relief because one can only assume that this uniquely British programme with its uniquely British characters set in a uniquely British surrealist world was not turned into a work of genius by Chex Notes, the Fox Network. The problem with a lot of these failed American remakes is that they feel like they're talking down to their audience. In order to make these shows more palatable to US audiences, the edginess is trimmed off, the, the darker tones are turned up a shade, and, and one or two dimensions are shaved off the characters. One of the biggest successes in recent years in both the US and the UK has been Fleabag. And the reason why it never got a remake is because it was co-produced with Amazon Prime, who just you know, put it on their platforms. If Fleabag was a hit before streaming platforms came along, then TV networks would have just picked it up and remade it like they've done with everything else, and it would have been a disaster like everything else. So, have you met your new neighbour yet? 
Yeah, she seems nice. Uh, her name's Fleabag. F Fleabag? Yeah. I mean, she has a lot of issues surrounding her place in the world, her relationships with men, her role as a modern feminist, and her inability to deal with tragic episodes in her life. But yeah, she seems nice. Uh, do we get to meet her, or...? I doubt it. Why? Because everything she does cannot be shown on a major TV network. So... so what's this show meant to be? Uh, just you and me talking about her. What kind of a show is that? Don't, don't do that. We're not, we're not doing it. Amer Americans won't understand that. Oh, this is Fleabag now. Hey, Fleabag, what's up? Oh, man. Really? <laughs> oh, gosh. You sure do get up to some crazy adult stuff as a result of your tumultuous life, Fleabag. <laughs> okay, bye. What has she done? I can't say. You, you can't say? Uh, no. I, I can't even say what she said to me. I don't think this show is gonna get picked up. Can you stop doing that? Don't stop. It's Fleabag again. Hey, Fleabag! This is the stupidest show I've ever been in. What? Oh, man, you did it. That is so shocking and yet also symptomatic of a single woman's experience of living in a modern Western society. Yeah. Okay, bye. Can you say what she did this time? Uh, no. No, I can't. Don't even look. So why is it that US networks copy our shows, uh, but we gladly accept their imports? Because we're British. And we're a bit sneakier. Case in point, Lead Balloon was a sitcom starring Jack D as a grumpy, misanthropic comedian whose life is plagued by embarrassment and awkward situations, which did lead some reviewers to make comparisons to Curb Your Enthusiasm. And when I say some reviewers, I mean all reviewers. It was all anyone could talk about. It was so obvious. Coupling was a sitcom from the early 2000s about six young friends, three men, three women, who all have different relationships with one another and, and get up to all sorts of various antics every week. The, the Friends vibes coming off this show was enough to knock you over. In fact, when the makers of Friends signalled that they were going to end the show, NBC bought Coupling to remake it as a potential replacement for Friends. Sadly, the show was cancelled after just four episodes because, in the words of Jeff Zucker, former CEO and president of NBC Universal, it sucked. However, the most outstanding remake to buck this trend is, of course, The Office. The US Office pilot is a carbon copy of the first episode of the UK version of The Office, and it wasn't, you know, very well received. But it was strong enough to guarantee a full season. And after that, the writers took the framework and the characters and just adjusted it and adapted it for US audiences. And now it's accepted as one of the most popular sitcoms of all time. I mean, even UK audiences like it. So, so what happened? What did they do that seemingly no one else could? Just this once, they found the right balance between these two vastly different cultural sensibilities, which appears to be an extremely difficult thing to do in the world of television. It probably won't happen again for decades, like a solar eclipse. I think American and British writers should continue to inspire each other, but I don't think they should keep jumping into bed with each other for the sake of a big paycheck. Now, British audiences will be expecting me to carry on with that bed metaphor for the sake of a cheap sexual punchline, and American audiences will hope that I just never mention it again and just end the video abruptly. Well, God bless America. Like and subscribe. Goodbye.